Hi everyone, welcome to the second video in this series from Rooms of Wonder by Johanna Bastard. We're going to be colouring in the steampunk butterfly today. Um, I think it looks like a lot of fun. So let's get a bit closer and get started. Now I decided that this one could be quite colourful. Um, I'm going to be using my Castle Art Metallics. Um, like I did for the snail, I will use them for all of the images on this page and um, just show you my ideas on how to uh, how to go about it. The first place I'm going to start is the body. Now for me, when I do a butterfly body, I usually do it in greys and that's what I'm going to do for this one. So I'm going to start with my darkest grey, which is actually um, a typhoon grey. There we go. And uh, it's a br it's slightly brownish actually, not really, but just a little bit. I'm just going to get going and uh, see where it takes me really. What I want to do with this tiny bit is try and leave a white bit in the middle to make it look shiny. And the same with this. Now, this um, antennae it would be lighter at the very top, so I'm going to leave a little white bit right at the top there. And the idea of leaving white is to give us some idea of shine, which makes it look more metallic. Although we're actually using a metallic pencil, it's not massively shiny. And I think it's still nice to try and leave some shine. If um, And if you don't have them, you can use this technique to show shine. So if you were using polychromos, for example, I would use um, a Payne's Grey, actually, for this. Payne's grey looks really nice. Uh, I'm going to do the screw quite dark and then a little bit lighter around there. I'm going to leave the rest of that for a different colour. Um, hmm, looking at this cog, there's a lot going on. I think I'm going to make it dark here and then reduce my layers and pressure as I go up towards the middle so that I can leave a little white bit there like shine. Do the same down here. The centre part and the background we'll do in a slightly different grey later. And here I'm going to do these elements in this colour. So trying to leave little bits of white here and there for shine. Ideally you want to fade towards it but you've got such a teeny tiny bit you can't really. So I'm just leaving a little white bit. There we go. So that's all for that colour. I'm going to go for a lighter grey now. Um, I think I will use the uh, Vesuvius grey, just because it's different to the greys we used for our snail. I think it's quite nice to try some different colours. Let's give it a sharpen. Here we go. So this is our Vesuvius grey. If you were using polychromos, use one of your cold greys. Um, I'm going to make it lighter at the top and bottom. Like I'm going to do the same here. I think, because if you think about how the shape of the body would be, it would be more like to have a light bit down the centre. So that's what I'm going to try and do in all of the elements. Just make it a bit lighter. Now we've got this shadow in here. I'm going to ignore that for a minute. I'm going to keep going with my more layers here and less towards the middle. Because this is quite a light colour, I can't get it really intense there, so I'll show you what to do in a minute. Yeah, I'd use a cold grey 3, I think, or 4, for this. Now, if you've got a cold grey 3 or 4, you could probably not change colour here. I'm going to the Mythos Black to be careful with this, it's quite dark and I'm just going to put a few bits in here to really look like the shadow of that bit. The black mixes quite nicely with the silvers in this set. I'm not going to do any more because I could do under the cogs and all around, it's too much. You could do that. I'm not going to. I'm not going to overcomplicate it. Um, Wanted to be fun and easy, so that's what we're going to do now. My wings. 
I'm going to do the top pair in a different colour to the bottom pair. I think it'd just be fun. So for the top I'm going to use a purple and for the bottom I'm going to use a sort of pinky red. So the purples, I'm going to pick two purples which are um, quite different in their tones. So we've got the amethyst and the violet sapphire. So the amethyst is quite intense, it's this one, um, that one, and the violet sapphire is a little bit paler. So I think I'm going to use the darker one for the background and then the lighter one for the details. That's my plan. You can reverse it if you think it will work better for you. So we're going to start with the amethyst, as I said, the darker one. And I'm just going to get going. So for these wings, I think it would make sense for them to be a little bit darker on the edge and then lighter towards the middle. So that's what I'm going to do, is build up the colour at the edge and then fade it towards the centre like that. I think I'm slightly off centre there, but I'm not going to worry and do that bit in there. I'm going to do that line with my lighter colour. I know I've gone over. Let's just erase slightly. Uh, oh, it's not going to erase, never mind. So darker in here. Gosh, I'm suddenly really hot. It's uh, unseasonably hot at the moment, but I keep getting so hot, like I'm having a hot flash or something, which I might very well be. But, oh, the last few days, whew, I've been struggling. Actually, I've got my slippers on. I might just kick them off. Bear with me. Oh, they didn't want to come off. Oh, there we go. Oh, I pulled half my socks off at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I kicked the desk. Right, back to it. I might not be so hot now. Hot and bothered and distracted. Right, so I'm fading that one. Yeah? And I shall fade from here. Hmm. I can't quite work out. Because that is an outline, as is that, and it goes up here and up here. But, oh, it goes up there. Hmm. Okay, well we'll do this bit and we'll try and work out, work it all out. <laughs> sometimes Johanna confuses me. Not just Johanna. Most sometimes illustrators confuse me. So, <clears throat> see now this looks like background. Um, and that looks like I should have done it as foreground. Um... <laughs> <laughs> I mm, I think I can just carry on and right let's do this bit dark here leave these little bits for our lighter colour we could always get a third um, colour you see I think I might have to do that that's turned into background. Mm, there's a line there. I think I'm going to do this bit in this colour. Fade that down. I don't know how you can see that. It's on the curl of the page. Like that. And this bit. that um, just checking and thinking maybe this bit right now because I think this is all the amethyst I'm going to do I need to repeat over here I don't know whether to do this with you or whether to uh, stop the camera but I'm just going to do it quickly with you. And uh, what I'm basically doing is just checking what I did on the other side and copying it. And it's actually easier to do it now 
than to leave it and come back to it later than try and remember what I did and which pencils I used and that sort of thing. That one's too dark. And me doing this might give you time to catch up if you're trying to colour along, but you can always pause and do a bit and come back. Oh so yeah, I did that one a little bit lighter because it's nearer the middle. That's right, oops. So that bit dark. Less towards the middle. And same here, really dark. And then reduce. Yeah, that's all that. Okay. Now we have our lighter purple, but we do have several other shades, so I'm going to use this one and uh, we'll see if we need another. So this is the Violet Sapphire, and I'm going to go through most of it and uh, leave the bits I'm a bit unsure of. So a bit darker here, nearer the top, and less towards the middle bit. Not sure how different it looks quite similar isn't it? I thought it was really light. On my swatch chart I must have coloured it extra light. That one needs to be lighter because it's nearer the middle. So I'm going to fade this as we go towards the centre. Keep that pretty consistent. Um, that bit Fade in, leave this bit really pale, put a little bit of colour in here, and quite pale to there, just a tiny bit. Right, now we've got to think about bringing that in a little bit, dark here, light to there dark here. We'll do all the sort of background of the cogs. Yeah, we're going to need another colour, aren't we? That's okay, you can do that. We've got another purpley colour, which we can use. Oh, is that? That's a bit of cog, and that's a bit of cog. We'll do that one, and we'll do that one. And down here, we'll do this bit, so a bit darker down here. And lighter as we go up. And the other side. It's a lot quicker once you've decided what you're doing where. Um. <laughs> if I can decide where I'm going to start. I think the centre of that was the other colour, wasn't it? So this is just grabbing the amethyst. That should be lighter than that, really. But there we go. It's done that. So just fading it towards that middle again. Really light bit here. a matter of trying to get it similar. It's going to need to be a bit darker there. Oops, I went over a cog there. There we go. Okay. Oops realize I've moved you across I'm really sorry okay now are we going to go for the iris purple or the viola I think the viola which is quite sharp so the viola is going to be our last color and we're just going to fill in the bits that we've missed out so here I'm going to put a bit of white in the middle of that can't there I'm going to leave, try and leave that center bit white these I can't do much with, I should just go over them and those. 
Now we have the cog, so I have to think about, I'm going to make it darker here, fade it down there, fade it look towards there, darker here, lighter to there, so dark here, up there. This one I'm going to fade to the side like that. These screws I'm going to make lighter in the middle can do with that one. This one I'm going to make a lighter area top and bottom around that edge. Now with this I'm going to do each of those and just fill them in and then I'm going to try and make it a little bit lighter on the circular bits between each one. Quite hard on that centre bit but we've got a bit more room here to do that. And then this cog darker at the bottom lighter to the edge like that and then we're going to repeat that on this side just checking you can see this time I'm sorry about that it's always quite I forget to check what you can see which is really naughty of me but sometimes I even forget there's anyone watching even though I'm talking to myself it's just a little bit scary really, isn't it? <laughs> it indicates I always talk to myself. I should let you decide if that's true or not. I don't always talk to myself, but I do a lot. I think a lot of us do. One of my sons does a lot. It's quite funny. So uh, he's... Uh, I'll say, what are you saying? He's like, oh, I'm not talking to anybody. <laughs> He's just working something out in his head. That line, I think, should have been the other purple. But I can't remember, so I'm just going to do it. Okay, there is our... I haven't done that bit. There we go. Right. So there are top wings and the bottom wings are going to be done with the sort of pinky colours. Just having a look at what we've got. I think Garnet Lake is going to be my first choice. There we go. I need to sharpen. Oops. There it is. Garnet Lake. And I'm going to do the sort of backgroundy areas with that. So I'm going to go a little darker under here where there would be some shadow under the wing and here where they would it, where it's against the body. I just realised I started on the other side this time. It doesn't really matter, does it, like that. I'm going to find it easier to do it this way and go from side to side. I think I'm less likely to miss bits if I do it this way and remember what colour I did bits. There we go. So again, a bit darker here, under here. And sort of around the edge. I'm going to fade it towards the middle of the wing. Like that. Now this colour, if you were trying to do a um, polychromos, mm. you probably... Mm, looking at a red violet, maybe something like that. Burnt sienna, magenta, sort of shade. Oops, that is a cog. <laughs> there we go. Okay, let's just fill in that bit. Um, we'll do this bit. I just realised I haven't gone back to the other side yet, have I? We'll do these bits quite lightly because they're in near the middle of the wing. Okay, let's go over here. And do these bits. But um, you could do a more subtle pink, but you don't want to do a really pastely pink because I don't think they look. You can get a metallic look, so I wouldn't use a light magenta. Or. Um, uh, middle purple pink or uh, light madder lake those sorts of colours 
I would go for the, as I say, the magenta or the red violet, something a bit, or even a fuchsia might work. Oh, I think that needs colouring in. A bit dark on the edge, in the middle. I've got a little bit in there, haven't we? Let's do these bits quite gently. I think we might be done. Just checking. Yeah, I think so. Right, so now I'm going to pick another one. Um, what are we going to do? Let's do the Jasper Purple. It's quite similar. Although I've said this is going to be pink. These are these sorts of purpley pinky tones, which are obviously very different to these more violet bluey tones. So I'm going to start here. Just see how we go. Leave a bit of white in the middle. Make it look like it's got some shine. So I'm getting thirsty. The clock's changed tonight. It's the um, I'm recording this quite far in advance. It's um, the 30th of October, and uh, so the clocks went back. So it's half past eleven, and I'm thinking I'm starving and really thirsty. <laughs> but uh, anyway. I've been awake since supper five. <laughs> I hate the I hate the clock change so much. It just takes me at least a week, if not two, to get used to it. So you see, I'm still trying to leave a little white gap in the centre of these little bits and pieces, just to try and make them look shiny right we'll move on to the cogs now so i've got to decide where it's got to be darker and where it's going to be lighter mm. i don't think i'm going to go darker there and lighter there fill that in like that and do the same pattern here so dark to lighter And here I'm going to do those slightly differently, so I'll do this one first. Yeah, we've got a nice lunch on a Saturday, it's Sunday today. On a Saturday we usually have an avocado and um, some olive oil crisp. We really spoil ourselves because it's a family lunch. Normally at lunchtime we're not together as a family, so it's really fun. With some um, nice fresh bread. Ah! That background bit I coloured last time. Yeah. So uh, I've gone back to my um, Garnet Lake for this bit. So uh, yesterday we had father-in-law for lunch, which was really nice. He wanted to come and see the kitchen. It's not finished. But it was in a state where we could put a table up and put the chairs in and things, which was rather fun. So he came for lunch. So we had a cooked lunch. Right, so I'm going to do this one like I've done the other cogs like this. So go dark in here, and then a little bit of light between each of these sections. And here, extend that dark bit, whoops. And so, uh, yeah, we had a nice lunch, and then we had leftovers um, in the evening. So uh, we've still got our treat lunch to have, we're going to have it today instead. Yeah, we had... Um, my husband bought some pies from the farmer's market. I don't eat pies, so I did some roasted chickpeas for me with all sorts of uh, spices on, cinnamon and, um, what did I do? I did cinnamon, coriander, cumin and sunak, sumac, sorry. Um, and uh, so that was nice. And um, we had some boiled new potatoes. I rarely cook potatoes. We love them, but they're not that healthy, so we don't have them that often. And um, some um, flat, flat beans, broccoli spears, um, carrots and peas. That was nice. And uh, hmm, I think I'll do that one like that. Leave a bit in the middle. Those dots I can't do much with. Uh, those I can't, they're too small, I'll just fill them in. 
I still haven't decided what to do with this one. I think I'll just do it dark top and bottom. And then I bought an apple pie for pudding, or I suggested an apple pie my husband actually shop. And I realised we'd had pie for the main and the pudding. Whoops. But never mind. This seemed to go down well. Got some cream to go with the pie. And the children had the leftover pie for their breakfast. <laughs> but there we go. Um, round like that for the screw. Oops, the outside bit is quite small, so I'm just going to go over it really. And these. This bit behind. Hmm. I don't know if I want to introduce another colour just for this one little bit, so I think I'm going to take my other colour, the background colour, the um, Garnet Lake, and do it with that. So I want it to be a bit darker on the edge. So I just layer it up. Yeah, there's still um, there's still kitchen work to be done. They need to swap out the radiator because it isn't working. Um, box around the pipe work for the radiator once it's in. And uh, then the decorator needs to come back. And there's a few little bits and pieces that hardly any of the cupboard doors are closing properly just need adjusting and there's a bit of work to do on the floor and uh, other little bits and pieces so we need a new front door mat which um, they forgot to order because um, we sort of made the hallway look try and make the hallway look better as well at the same time um, outside the kitchen so it's a little bit annoying, it's just all those little bits which, you know, had, you know, I could have the plumber in on Monday, the carpet on on Tuesday, I need to get a bit more work top done and measured, that would take a week though, but I could have the man in on Wednesday to do that, he could come back the following week and fit it, I could have the decorator in and it could be done, but they're slow in sending people in, I haven't ordered the radiator yet, it's like, ah! But anyway, I need to be patient. But there is our butterfly. I'm really happy with our little butterfly. I think it looks cute. Um, now, if that's too detailed for you, you really could just ignore all the cogs and drawings and just put a dark outline around that and fade it to the middle and just let the cogs just shine through your colouring. But I think it's quite fun to do those details sometimes. But as I say, it's up to you and what you can cope with. Oh, the sun's just coming across my book. Luckily, not the bit we're looking at. But anyway, I'm going to get off now um, and uh, and uh, finish up. So thank you very much for watching. Um, enjoy the rest of your day and happy colouring. <laughs>